wives' tale, I mean, it just really came from wrestling with my, uh, the people in my family that are going through memory loss issues and one of, the, one of my dear friends, his father has just dementia and then uh, several other friends like having parents or loved ones with memory loss issues and, and then one of my good buddies, like his, his dad doesn't know who he is sometimes and doesn't know where he is. Like he'll be in his bedroom and think he's like at the police station or like downtown. So thinking about that, the first couple verses was just an amalgamation of, of stories from a lot of those people in my life, you know. A lot of the things that I talk about in that song, like getting lost in your own house and not knowing where you're at and not knowing who your family members are and wanting to see family members or friends who are dead. Those are, those are all things that have happened to me or people in my life. Um, and then f a lot of the other song, I just, I honestly just put myself in a place where I thought about like, what if my wife was going through this? Um, what if this is something I'm gonna have to go through? Then how would I feel about it? And the first thought was like, I want to put it on my back and be like, I've got you. Like, if you lose yourself, I'll hold you together. But knowing spiritually, like, I'm going to die too. I could lose my mind too. Having some things is not a bad thing. Well, that's what we're, yeah, we're for, for sure want to mm -hmm. do that. And that he's done that with a couple other parts, for sure. <laughs> you just got dive bombed. Did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> so the bass tone uh, really was there was only three bass tones on the whole record, uh, as far as I know. Um, dirty, uh, not as dirty, and then uh, almost like a oddly muted bass at the beginning of um, Open Letter. For Wives' Tale, I think the bass tone really up. gets to shine a lot. And it goes back to, I don't even know if, if you ever really get it in Pedro uh, very often, but it just, to me, it's the feel that I get with, with Pedro. It's just kind of like driving grungy stuff, maybe even back to like um, some of the early punk rock saves the day that I've always loved. Um, honestly, it was, it was the bass and a rat. Uh, I don't own a rat, but Matt Goldman owns a rat, and uh, he got all the tone with, with the rat. And um, I like to get a really good, I don't know what the right words are to use, I kind of use the word guttural, uh, sound for my clean bass where it's got a good bit of grit to it, but not, not crazy. And then we get to punch the distortion uh, when it needs it. The part where I do tremolo picking, I did it on a lark, like, oh, this could be cool. Um, and Jeremiah was like, right away, like, I really like that. And even to this point, I think you said it's one of your favorite parts of the song. It might be, I think it might be my favorite part of the record is when that part hits. Yeah, and to me, it's like... I mean, it's cool. Yeah, and that's how, <laughs> that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. I'm I like... What I'm doing on bass is super different for me, but I think it's just good. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love what it does there. I love that we, like, a lot, in a lot of ways, my epic, uh, at least as far as, like, the rhythm section, uh, is defined by being heavy yet having that groove. And to me, that just is heavy with a really cool groove underneath. Yeah. And you, you don't have a groove at all. Like, you're just doing that straight sound. Um, and obviously Tanner's doing some, some cool uh, atmosphere there too. But I just think that part hits so good after that build. Yeah, some bands that we really love like, like Mew and uh, Jimmy Eat World do a lot of <clears throat> tremolo picking and I've always thought it was cool but I just never did it before. And then the funny thing is like Tanner is most of the time he's playing guitar. But a lot of the stuff he adds sometimes I don't even know on a demo if it's a guitar or... And demos aren't, well, aren't that well recorded either. 
we don't work that hard on them because they're just demos and we just want to make sure you get the ideas down. But that was another one of those songs where half the time I'm like telling Goldman, like, yeah, that part here in the demo, but I don't know if that's a guitar or a synth or both. When we, when, we, when we decided we were gonna do Viscera, as soon as we said, okay, we're gonna do guts, lungs, mind, and heart, I was like, mind, I wanna address that issue um, of, of well, I, and it just struck me like, people always say, oh, you can just keep, you can always keep your memories, and I was like, that's a lie, and I wanna deal with that, and I wanna find some hope in it, and again, it was like open letter in the sense that um, we didn't wanna give an easy answer. We didn't just want it to be like, but God exists, so it's all okay. Um, but it's, it's not that like God, God exists so dementia and Alzheimer's don't matter. It's like God exists so we can have faith through those things. We can trust that there's a plan in them. Yeah, and so the question becomes just like, yeah, you don't get to keep your mind either. So what do you, so today while, you're, while your mind is strong and your heart is full of dreams and your body is working relatively well, where are you placing your hope in now? Because it won't always be that way. I'm